This is the GTN Show and welcome. Now, this week we have got yet more new tech. We have got more race results as the race season really starts to gather a pace pictures from you guys, and we've also got the caption competition. Yeah, on top of that, we are going to be dragging in the help from another GCN presenter, giving them a little bit of a challenge. Plus, we're gonna be asking, is triathlon good for you? So Fraser, would you say that we're healthy? You mean are we healthy because we do triathlon? Well, it is actually a really good question, Heather. Now, I think that both of us are really quite biased, and as much as I'm loath to admit it, all the positives that there are are definitely outweighed with some negatives as well, aren't they? Well, I mean, it's a bit of a negative start to it, but I think there's so many pros to doing triathlon and making us healthy. I mean, to start with, you've got that mental stimulation, and. And I personally think you're as old as you think you are, and I know that you know, with triathlon you've got people of all ages doing it, and you, know, you can hang out with the younger people and pretend you're their age, and you're mentally getting that um, chance to train with lots of different people, speak to people, you're getting outside. If you live in the Northern Hemisphere, this time of year we're just starting to get into that time where the days are lighter and you, you get to do your training outside. I know that definitely makes me feel better, which I think is healthy for me. Yeah, so we've got a really good social aspect, we've got fresh air and getting outside, and feeling healthier. We've also got the fact that it encompasses like three different sports which gives us upper body workouts, lower body workouts, weight bearing, non-weight bearing, which is just a really good sort of all conditioning aspect of triathlon, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's that balance Strength. and then there's something, you know, it's, it's quite even in that sense. You're not going to have like a really, your, your upper body should be relatively the similar strength to your lower body. So you've kind of got good ratios with that. And then also um, just actually doing exercise and having good cardiovascular health because you're raising your heart rate every day, you're using your lungs. So you've got that aerobic benefit, which is proven to help people live longer. Now, another thing that I find is a real positive with triathlon, and Heather and I had a little bit of a disagreement perhaps on this, is that the travel opportunities that it brings, and that's definitely something that I find was really exciting about triathlon when I was racing. I know it's totally different when you're racing, trying to do it as a living, or versus marrying around a busy family life, but I also know lots of friends who have managed to have really cool family holidays around about racing because yeah. they managed to tie that into life. Well, I get that, but I would equally just say, I want to go on holiday to that place. <laughs> I'm going to go on holiday. Yeah. I don't need to take my bike with me. It's quite nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then, and also, and this is it on you know on the flip side, and that kind of leads us into the cons that triathlon is maybe not the cheapest sport, which yes doesn't directly affect your health, but if you have got to travel lots, it's lots of time and money, which can in turn add stress, which isn't necessarily a benefit of the sport. No, 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 true. I think that's definitely something that gets overlooked with a sport that has three different disciplines in it. You can start ramping up all this stuff and. I must do this and I must do that because of the goals that we set ourselves and that is a real plus of, um, coming back to pluses of triathletes, is we're really goal driven and determined and motivated. That's, well, that's a whole other thing because that's chicken yeah. and egg, like which comes first True. with that one. But um, I mean going to the sort of slightly dramatic cons here, we want to brush over these quickly mm. but obviously you do have maybe an increased risk of injury whether that's from something quite dramatic like a bike accident which is obviously hopefully doesn't happen to you but probably will at some point in quite a few triathletes careers or just injuries from general training and putting that wear and tear on your body, which then can, if you don't look after your body, can lead to sort of problems further down the line, like maybe getting arthritis earlier and things like that. So, you know, there are, for, especially running, I guess, for that one is, does, you know, maybe reduce the longevity of your joints in that sense. One final point, talking about longevity, that word you use there, there was something that really crept up and caught my attention this weekend was Craig Alexander, who is nearly 46 this year, or he might be 46, mm. sorry, Croy. Anyway, Croy's managing to race well into his 40s and doing extremely well. And I think that's just a really cool example of how triathlon can, if done really well and managed properly, can just, just keep your, your life kind of going in this really positive way, right? Yeah, I think it is all that, like, balance. We talk about the balance all the time and, and yes, you know, you could say you're more stressed because you've got less time, you don't get to see your family quite as much as you, as you want, but then on the flip side, you actually get to release the stress you've got from work whilst you're out training. So who knows? And as you can tell, we are a little bit biased and we obviously think that we personally are healthy. You might disagree, but it's not about us. It's about whether you think triathlon is good for us generally. So this leads us on to this week's poll. We want to know, is triathlon good for you? Simple, yes or no, and just click on the link for the poll just up here. So let's have a look at last week's poll where we asked you, how long do you think you could last at Jan Frodeno's World Championship winning speed after seeing some of the folks from our office trying to give that a go? So we've got the results here, and at none, we had 2%. 
Mm. Zero to one minutes, we had 18%, which is a reasonable amount. Five plus minutes, 21% of you thought you could do that, which I'm quite impressed oh, with. I think that is pretty ambitious. And I'd love to know of that 21% of you who said you could, have you actually done it or do you just think you could? Yeah, hands up. I mean, I'd like to think I could, but I probably couldn't. And lastly, with one to five minutes, there was 59% of you thought that you could do that. Yeah, I'd like to think that I would be part of that group. Or maybe if I really pushed it, I could do 501 <laughs> and then put myself in the five plus minutes. Yeah, I mean, I'm probably with you as well, Heather, because it's quite fast running. It is, yeah. I think we'll leave that for our imagination for the time being. But we had a couple, well, we had loads of great comments. I've chosen a couple here. This one from Pyotr Prime. It looked like fun on the video until I actually got on the treadmill and punched in 19 kph. Yeah, I think exactly. that's, that's the reality, isn't it, when it hits? And then William Brazil also says, um, oh yeah, this was a little bit of, it's quite actually a good point. Um, if ex-pro cyclists are average Joes, then I'm in trouble. I mean, we were being a little bit cheeky when we <laughs> did call our fellow presenters average Joes, but you know. We just meant that they weren't very used to looking at a treadmill, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Now on to the news. Uh, we have noticed that Bell have released a new helmet and they have taken all of their 60 years of knowledge in the helmet industry to create the Aero Z20, which I do believe is their first Aero Road helmet. And not surprisingly, aerodynamics are key in the design of this, but also highly important is the safety features. But ventilation hasn't been forgotten either, despite all these Aero benefits. Yeah, and staying on the ventilation aspect, they've also got a sweat guide pad within it. So that's basically trying to stop the sweat from going in your eyes moving it to the side and then these pads have got silver fibers in so that it doesn't get too smelly and you know what like an old helmet if you go to borrow a friend's helmet you might not want to so that's going to hopefully help with that and then on top of that it's got the advanced technology MIPS which we're actually seeing a lot of helmets now come with and it's basically a technology system that stands for multi-directional impact protection system so it helps if you do have any rotational forces when you fall. Now Cervelo clearly didn't think the launch of one new bike was enough because they have this week just or this past week should I say announced the launch of the P3X, which in essence is an upgraded version of the P5X. And I say that because what they've managed to do with this new bike is make it more affordable because that was really a problem with the P5X, it was super expensive. And a lot of pros also find that perhaps it was a little bit too heavy, perhaps if you're on a hilly courses. So this new P3X is also quite a bit lighter too. Yeah, and apparently, I mean, we've not had a chance to ride it, but apparently it even rides as a stiffer bike and is better for cornering. So it does seem like it's win-win. It's still got that adjustability at the front, so it's really easy to raise and lower your, your um, tri bars. But there's one feature that maybe isn't quite so easy for when it comes to packing. The P5X used to fold, the base bars would fold down for packing. However, these base bars, you can flip them because it's one solid piece, so you can have them slightly higher up if you want. So, you know, there's a, there's a flip side to Makes that. Makes it lighter, apparently, that yeah. they don't break. So yeah, that's... well, be interesting to see it in real life. But moving on, we've now got some a couple of announcements, actually, from the ITU. One of the significant ones, if you are an age group athlete who's had the, uh, you know, been fortunate enough to represent your nation, you'll know that you actually have to buy your nation's tri-suit. Irrelevant of whether you like it or not, you've got to race in that current one. Now, they've relaxed the rules on saying that if your nation changes, that in Great Britain the suits change quite often and they're not cheap. You know, it's mm. a couple of hundred pounds. And if you have to change that every time they decide to change, you know, you are an athlete who regularly represents your nation, it gets expensive. So they've now said that once that uniform's been approved, if your nation changes their style, you can still use the old one. So yeah, good news there. Yeah, it makes total sense. Um, and on the note of ITU and things that they're announcing, they have just released the dates and the location for the 2021, so quite a bit in the future, 2021 multi sport world championships so this year we have them in Pontevedra in Spain mm -hmm. 2020 we've got them in Almere but in 2021 they've just announced they're going to be in Townsville in Australia oh nice and finally, a piece of tech. It's a new shoe from Nike, the Pegasus Flyees. It's been designed to not have laces, so it's got that ease of fastening. Apparently it's got a zip and a strap that's actually been designed with athletes who have less dexterity in their hands for being able to make it slightly easier to put on. Yeah, and um, one of their athletes actually, Sophie Han, who won Paralympic gold in the T38 category, category sorry, in Rio, she just commented on the fact that it's just really cool that Nike have developed a shoe that is more focused towards athletes like them who just find it hard to use their hands as much and it just you know allows them to get shoes on and off a lot easier. This week we thought we'd see how good our friends over at GCN are at getting out of wetsuits. Now bear in mind it's not something they do very often, but we were kind, we didn't drag them up to the pool or make them get wet. Right, so we have got Hank here from the GCN channel. Thanks, Hank. I'm now, my time of 17 seconds is perhaps under threat here, so we'll see what, what you've got in store no. here. <laughs> All right, tell me when to go. Right, we've got 
three, two, one, yep. Oh, it's good technique. Oh, look at the speed. My word, right? Well, yeah, 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 yep. Yeah. Kick, kick it, kick it. Oh, done. Nine seconds. Oh, that's a little bit awkward, Fraser. I mean, I know you were at the bottom, but now we've got a cyclist at the top of the table. Yeah, I mean, he did do quite well, but to be fair, his wetsuit was bone dry, and I'm fairly certain that's far easier to get a wetsuit off that's not been wet. Well, maybe. We didn't put that in the rules, so that's our fault. Yeah. But this is where we need your help, because we need to make sure that we've got a triathlete at the top of that table. So at home, please go and put your wetsuit on, take a, get someone to film you, getting it off as quickly as you can, and make sure that you beat Hank. It's time to get nosy. We're going to have a look at your photos. And this first one we've got sent in from Stephen Gurley in Ganubi, Eastern Cape in South Africa. Not completely finished yet. Still need to put medals up and a few motivational bits. Oh, and a flat screen. Got but good if, ambitions there. Yeah, I mean, if it's not finished, I still think it looks like a really good little pain cave. Nice little swim, bike, run mural on the wall. Giant bike on the turbo. Treadmill ready to run. And obviously competed in the Ironman South Africa. So, yeah. Can't tell the date from the towel, but... No, I recognise that towel, though, okay. and I did it two years ago, so it could be 2017. There you Who go. Knows? Unless they use the Next same towel up, we've got one from John, and he's got his Richie Breakaway Cyclocross bike, and a stunning picture, we both agree. Yeah. It's in the Joshua Tree National Park in California, isn't it? It is. He says, perfect weather after weeks of record rainfall at home in LA. We're hoping that rainfall's gone out of the way because we're heading there soon. Anyway, you haven't caught this view from of Mount Boldy in the distance while doing some off-road riding. So if you look carefully, you can actually yeah, see, the see the snow Yeah, over there. exactly. Yeah, so lovely one. Love I that one. get views like that when we're out there, Fraser. Uh, well, yeah. But back to reality for a moment, because we have this photo here from these guys asking if it's too early to swim in the open water in Pembrokeshire. I mean, I think they've answered their own question that it must be absolutely freezing. They managed 10 minutes, apparently. Which is 10 minutes longer than I'd have managed. I mean, I have raced Ironman Wales, and that's in September when water temperatures are apparently at their water, uh, warmest, rather, and it's not very warm in September You're either. from Scotland, so yeah. if you find it cold, then it must be freezing. Well, again, some great photos, so make sure you send us in yours, even if you're not crazy enough to be doing open water swimming, if you've just got your bike set up on the turbo, we want to see whatever photos you've got, so use the uploader to send them to us. Now for our race news, and this weekend the Ironman 70.3 circuit rolled into Asia with two events with quite a lot of high profile athletes racing. First up was Ironman 70.3 Taiwan. On the men's side of things, former World 70.3 champion Michael Rayler led out of the water with a comfortable margin of over 90 seconds. By two thirds of the way through the bike, he had been overhauled by the South African Bradley Weiss, who catapulted himself into the lead on a seven kilometer climb, which gave him a minute buffer leading into T2. He held on to this throughout the run to take his second victory of the year already, ahead of Cyril Viano from France and Luke McKenzie from Australia in third. Now onto the women's side of things, and Amelia Watkinson from New Zealand led out of the water on that race. She was closely followed by Sarah Crowley from Australia and Grace Thick also from Australia. So Sarah Crowley dominated the half marathon to take the victory by some eight minutes from second place, which was Grace Thick from Australia and third place was Els Visser from Holland. Now on to Ironman 70.3 Davao in the Philippines. And young German professional Marcus Rowley certainly didn't let the caliber of field assembled face him. Indeed, there was two 70.3 ex-world champions present in Tim Reed and Craig Alexander, amongst many other stellar athletes. Nonetheless, Rowley put on a masterclass in riding, taking an eight minute advantage into T2. Over a quartet of Australians chasing him, including that duo of former world 70.3 champions. Also Sam Betton and Tim Van Berkel. Rowley's read was definitely eroded onto the run, but he held strong, taking the victory with Craig Alexander in second and Tim Van Berkel in third. And onto the women's race, we had three women exiting the water all very close to each other in Radka Kalafelt, Carlin Steffen and Curly Seidel. Seidel lost five minutes by the time they hit T2 and it was a race for the victory between Radka Kalafelt and Carlin Steffen. With Steffen eventually dropping off, Radka Kalafelt taking the victory, Steffen holding on to second and Curly Seidel taking third. Now staying in the Asia Pacific region, we're moving on to slightly shorter distances at Super League Bali. Now racing was dominated by French and Australian athletes on both the male and female side of affairs, with Ryan Fisher from Australia taking the victory on both day one and day two. Similarly, we had two French athletes taking second and third respectively on both days in Orly and Raphael and Anthony Pujages. 
In the women's racing, we also had a dominating winner from Sandra Dode, French athlete. She won both days. And second and third went to the Australian athletes, Danielle Don Francisco and Felicity Sheedy Ryan. And all these athletes have qualified for the championship. Right, it's time for caption competition. So last week we had a rather cool picture of the athletes running into the water perhaps. Well, we have our first caption as we can't pronounce it, but we sure want to win it, which I like. Yeah, and we had to put that into context because that was, you didn't actually say where the race was, Fraser. Where was it? Mooloolaba. Yeah, well, I struggled with that one last week, so <laughs> nicely picked up and um, yes, I have learned it. It's Mooloolaba, there we go, got it. Um, anyway, our next one up comes from JJ. One small step for man, dot, dot, dot. Um, but this week, the winner is from Vera, 870. Shark! <laughs> <laughs> well done, Vera. You'll be getting that cap, so just get in touch and we will send that one to you. Uh, this week, we have this photo from the Middle East and it's um, the mixed relay out from Abu Dhabi. And it looks as though this Hungarian athlete is sort of crawling a bit golem isn't she? stealth, yeah, it's good. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. she was moving much quicker than the photo shows. But. Under the radar. But anyway, let us know what caption suggestions you have in the comments section below for your chance to win one of these GTN caps. Right, that is us for another week here at the show. Hopefully you guys can start helping us out with our leaderboard because I'm a little bit frustrated that Hank's up there on the top of that. So if you can get a really fast T1 or perhaps a T2 filmed, send us in please. And um, yeah, we'll get Hank off there. Yeah, I think we need to do that quite quickly. Well, we've got some exciting news to come from the shop. We've got some new products about to be released, but you've got to wait a little bit longer. If you like the look of what we're wearing at the moment, you can click on the link to the shop now to find those and keep your eye out for those new products coming. If you've enjoyed this, give us a thumb up, like, and to make sure you get all of our videos here at GTN, just hit the globe to subscribe. And if you're interested in doing a little bit of yoga and you think maybe it's time to go along to a yoga class, but you don't really know what you need to do, what you need to bring, what to expect, well, there's a video that will tick all all of those boxes just here. And if you want to know how to use a heart rate monitor, there's a video about that here.